This is a presentation on the paper, Retrospective and Perspective of the Study of Creativity, 80 years into the past and the future. My name is Ricardo Sosa. Uh, in this paper, we look back at 80 years of creativity research, specifically on the um, technique of brainstorming. And we use that, um, those lessons that we learn to look into the future and how we can do things differently and better in the future. So we look at the book, uh, Applied Imagination, the first edition by Alex Osborne, 1953, where he talks about the origins of brainstorming in the 1930s as a semi-structured ideation method. And the paper um, works around uh, the gaps between practice and research of design creativity. And in the book, the, the first part of the paper, you are going to see a lot of the key ideas that Osborne uh, presents when talking about brainstorming, how the sessions should be prepared, um, how they should be run, what to do after a session finishes, the importance of facilitation, uh, the rules of brainstorming, and the uses of brainstorming uh, in ideation. So in the, in the 15 years after the publication of that book, there were 15 papers, uh, 15 studies on brainstorming. And then since then, there's been 3,000 papers, uh, nearly 300 in the last 12 months. Now, um, when, you, when you look at that first part of the paper and you see like the key points or the key guidelines that uh, Osborne suggested for brainstorming, when you compare that to ideation studies that have been carried out since then, um, this is a list of things that um, go against those basic principles of brainstorming as presented by Osborne um, so many years ago. A lot of ideation studies employ inexperienced students. They are, these students, these participants are randomly assigned uh, to teams. They are instructed to generate solutions in response to a problem statement. Uh, this is different from the use of brainstorming that Osborne uh, explicitly said, um, storming is different from solving a problem. Storming is about creating leads that can be further evaluated and, and developed um, for solutions. Um, the tasks that are used in these ideation studies tend to be um, quite inconsequential, toy problems. Um, they can also be quite general, as opposed to Osborne saying uh, a problem needs to be framed adequately for a brainstorming session. Um, often these sessions in ideation studies have a limit of five to 15 minutes. Uh, and this is understandable. Uh, the researchers tend to justify this by saying that's when the fluency or the, the flow of ideas slows down. Osborne does talk about this in the book or in the originally, and he talks about um, the importance of facilitation and how the uh, facilitator needs to uh, generate their own list of ideas prior to a session so that they can uh, prime and they can they can promote um, the flow of ideas when this uh, when when the rate of ideation slows down. Uh, studies often focus only in one single session, where Osborne talked about uh, what he called the triple attack, having individual uh, brainstorming followed up by group brainstorming and then again by individual brainstorming. Participants in these studies are, are usually also compensated. They, they are often lacking uh, audio recordings, whereas uh, Osborne talked about the importance of registering, uh, taking notes of the ideas, including audio recordings. Very importantly, a lot of these studies don't use facilitators uh, when Osborne continuously refers to the importance of having uh, skilled facilitators. He also talks about sending participants a background memo uh, one or two days in advance, and then a follow-up communication where you share the ideas produced during the session. And he talks about these afterthoughts being usually the most creative ideas that people bring after they keep thinking about these, uh, these, these problems. Uh, this is usually not done in ideation studies. Um, ideation studies usually focus on a single input, uh, um, sorry, a single output, uh, early sketchy ideas, annotated ideas. And these ideas are treated as solutions that are judged by a panel, as opposed to what um, Osborne explicitly said, these sessions are not for solving a problem, they are for storming a problem. And I think that distinction is very important. So as a result, most studies end up testing quasi-brainstorming procedures. 
And so a lot of this, uh, a lot of the literature needs to be taken with a grain of salt. These are some of the authors that through the years have been noticing the considerable gaps between the original formulation of brainstorming and actually how brainstorming is often run in professional practice, as opposed to how it's reduced to some procedures, lab procedures for uh, the research. Now, looking into the future, so that's, that's what we've learned. Basically, there is, a, there is a, a considerable disconnect between how brainstorming was originally formulated and how it's run in a lot of professional settings and how it's studied in, in experimental design creativity research. So these are a few things that I mentioned in, in the second half of the paper, but I think we need an emphasis on design creativity, um, looking at how we formulate the, the tasks and how we um, treat, uh, 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 how we plan a session and how we treat um, the ideas and, and, and the briefs. A, a designerly voice is, is necessary to critically assess the relevance. So my first suggestion is design ideation studies should be validated by professionals. Professionals should look at a research design and they should have a voice in saying whether that looks like what they do in practice or doesn't. Uh, another one is obviously an emphasis on facilitation. Uh, we need to, in order to understand better design ideation, I think we need to pay attention to facilitation principles, facilitation techniques. There also needs, I think, to to, uh, we need to have a stronger emphasis on association or associative thinking. Uh, for this, I, I'm proposing the theory of accretion of ideation, which is an extended combinatorial process where multiple combinations of fragmentary ideas are, um, as Osborne said, uh, skeptically entertained until a more complete idea is formed. So I think treating the early ideas from a, a single brainstorming session needs to be considered in, in light of the life the lifespan of ideas. We also need an emphasis on revealing assumptions. I feel that the best way to do this is to go back to the original sources, go back to um, what has been written about um, brainstorming and creativity more generally in the wild, how professionals, what we tend to call in academia the gray literature, uh, blog posts, books that professionals write about their um, creative practices. We also need an emphasis on methodology, I think, uh, mixing methods to triangulate the study of design creativity to increase the validity and applicability of findings. Some studies do this, but I think it needs to be done more often. And design researchers benefit from cultivating collaborations to combine research methodologies in this area. I think it also we also need to, to pay more attention to design to to the type of ideas that we generate, because a lot of the design ideation uh, research tends to borrow heavily from, say, cognitive science and other um, creative, creative cognition studies, where they use, like, basically an idea in that, in those fields uh, are responses to tests or standardized tests or puzzle problems that are used, such as alternate uses or the remote associate tasks. Um, but what does that really mean in design? Um, what is an idea in design? And we tend to use terms like ideas, concepts, designs, and solutions um, interchangeably. And I think we need a stronger theoretical framework to, to identify this. Also, we need an emphasis on design briefs. I think um, this has been characterized extensively, the difference between design and non-design problems. Problem reframing is indicative of design creativity. So to what extent, how can we conduct research on how the brief changes? Um, things that we could do is we could study participants as they work on reframing an early brief, um, influencing a design direction or a design orientation a strategy, or maybe storming a specific aspect of an open-ended and complex design problem. And we also need, I think, an emphasis on ideation purpose. Practitioners use brainstorming throughout a project from the very beginning to the very end. And so I think as ideation, design ideation research is able to identify where a session sits throughout the lifespan of a, of a project, it would be easier to compare results across studies. And, and I think in this way, researchers could justify the data they collect how they analyze the data, uh, the metrics they apply, and the tools 
and that would take them to say for instance in this particular image uh, very early conceptual sketches of chairs to to realize that it's really really hard to judge in any objective way the feasibility of this concept they are too early they are too sketchy even if a panel agrees um, it doesn't really mean that they are understanding what the person who created the sketch actually meant about their idea to conclude numerous misconceptions of creativity are based on research that follows academic rigor but ignores the rigor of design practice and i do believe that future design research needs to acknowledge the double challenge of being scientifically and also being designerly relevant thank you for listening and i look forward to the discussion and the questions around these ideas